My name is Jane Dang. I'm a grandson advocacy coordinator of Korean Community Services. Korean Community Services' mission is to be a nexus of service for underserved communities across the New York City area to help maintain their health and well-being. Thank you, Korean American Family Service Center, for inviting KCS to this rally against sexual assault hosted by the Youth Community College of Participating in this rally, advocating for many who are still suffering in silence alongside other volunteers really takes me back because I was the formal president of YCPT. I know from experience how tirelessly YCPT has worked to prepare for this rally and how dedicated KAFSC is to educating and empowering young students to become leaders who are able to speak, understand and speak up against what is wrong in their schools, in their weekend nights out, and in their homes. My four years serving at YCPT has been a truly eye-opening experience that helped me not grow just as a person, but also as a member of our growing Korean and AAPI community thanks to KAFSC staff and my peers. I hope the students standing here today will have a life-changing experience as a member of this meaningful team, just like I did, and carry the spirit of this team with you wherever you go in the future to break the silence and end the violence. KCS will continue to support all the valuable work that KAFSC does. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now welcome Violence Intervention Program, Jennifer Diaz. Hi, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, we're part of the Violence Intervention Program. We're also part of the community working to stop sexual assault and domestic violence in our communities. And I'm so thankful for the invitation as a native New Yorker and Queens resident to see all these partners be here. Uh, to talk to all the American communities and all how big uh, Queens is, it's great to know that we're all standing together to fight sexual assault, domestic violence, and gender-based violence in our communities with our own uh, specialty and conversations with our communities. Uh, and it's important that we highlight the work in order to end sexual violence and the importance of being here. And I want to thank everyone, and let's end sexual violence going forward. Thank you. We'll now welcome Womankind's Jennifer Lin. survivors of sexual violence and gender-based violence. We pride ourselves on being able to offer services across the lifespan with linguistic and cultural humility to the greater Asian community. Because of the communities we serve, womankind views domestic violence from a much broader lens than just intimate partner relationships. Much of the violence affecting the survivors we serve come from family members such as in-laws and grandchildren. Over the last two years, our communities have had to confront a pandemic and a quarantine, heightened economic hardships, and increased violence for its AAPI community. Survivors of domestic violence have been trapped and isolated with their abusers, making it difficult for them to seek services. For decades, we've seen that communities of color have disproportionate exposure to violence in everyday living, creating a lot of multi-general trauma. We must challenge these cycles of violence and name unhealthy relationship dynamics for what they are, abuse. Womankind firmly believes in community power to challenge systems, structures, and norms that foster violence in our relationships, families, homes, and communities. We must come together as part of the AAPI community to speak up against domestic violence and its pervasive impact. We must come together to support each other to ensure that all voices are heard within our communities. We must also work together to find solutions that support us. We have the power to build neighborhoods for each and every one of us can feel safe and secure. We want you to know that Womankind is here for you and ready to support however we can to rise above violence and innovate towards collective well-being, restoration, and social justice. We hope this rally makes survivors 
feel supported along their journey. Thank you everyone, thank you KAFC for organizing the event and for their commitment to supporting AAPI community. Thank you. We'll now welcome Christopher Bay, candidate for council member, Central District 19. Good morning, folks. My name is Christopher Bay, and I'm running for City Council District 19. I just want to say, uh, first of all, great work to the Korean American Family Services Center and GHA for all their leadership in fighting the good fight, fighting for justice. Uh, this is a, a topic and an issue that's very important to me. You know, back since law school at CUNY Law, I uh, attended trainings and provided trainings for gender-based violence. I, the Korean American Family Services Center has also been uh, focal point in the community. I previously participated in their mentor and mentee program. So I just know how much of an impact they are making in the community. I just want everyone to know that I stand in solidarity uh, to break the silence, to end the violence. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now welcome Assembly Member Stephen Rogers, Office Constituent Reason, Carol Guaman. Hi everyone. Um, Steve is in, caught up in some traffic, so I'm here on his behalf. Thank you for all the nonprofits and organizers for um, being here today and everyone for coming out as well. Um, as a Assembly District um, we are dedicated to combating gender-based violence and working with our community to build a violence-free society. In recognition of Sexual Awareness Month, we are proud to support the efforts of our local students from the YCPT who organized an annual rally to stand in solidarity with survivors of sexual assault. Um, as a victim of sexual assault as well, I am truly thankful and um, just really grateful for everyone who came out here. And well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And up next, we have our skit and poetry team. They have worked really hard to prepare a performance that emphasizes how each and every one of us can advocate for social change, educate our community, and empower survivors of sexual assault. We'll now, <clears throat> we'll now for everyone to step down the stairs for our next programming. Our first skit depicts stalking, a crime in which the seriousness is often disregarded. Through this skit, we hope to show the signs and dangers of stalking and to provide resources for how to take action. Mia has become a victim of stalking by her ex-partner and is experiencing a number of disruptive psychological consequences in her daily life. She feels significant fear and has safety concerns when traveling to and from school, and it soon becomes difficult for her to sleep at night, making her listless throughout the day, which takes a toll on her grades. Feeling as though she no longer has control of her life, she loses interest in her hobbies and constantly feels hopeless. However, she has now found a way to fight back. After various research, she learned that the Stalking Prevention Awareness and Resource Center website provides a stalking incident and behavior log to properly document evidence and build a strong case against the stalker. Mia is walking home from school when she notices her stalker following her. She looks back multiple times, and with each glance, she becomes more and more anxious. She sees someone ahead and asks for help. Mia tells the passerby that she is being followed and would like to walk together for a bit until the stalker goes away. 
graciously, the passerby believes Mia and offers to walk her home to make sure she is safe. This deters the stalker for the time being. When she returns home, she makes sure to document the incident into her log, along with the time, location, and the passerby's contact information, who kindly agreed to be noted as a witness. The following day, Mia is getting ready to head to school when she receives nonstop calls and messages from her stalker. As she takes screenshots of her call history and messages to add them to her log, she notices that the messages contain threats of sexual violence. Shaken by the messages, she asks her parents to drive her to school that day. As she enters the classroom, she spots a present and envelope on her desk. Inside, she finds numerous pictures of herself in and out of her home, even including sexually explicit photos. There is a note from her ex-partner that reads, I love you, Mia. Be my girlfriend again, or else I will kill myself and share these photos online. Mia wants nothing more than to get rid of the photos. However, she decides to keep them as evidence for her log instead. At the end of the day, when Mia arrives at home, she finds that her front door is badly damaged. Startled, she decides to photograph it for evidence and calls her parents. Mia shared what has been going on with her parents and continued to gather all the evidence for her stalking home. The next week, her and her family contact a legal advocate to help her file a case. The log was successful in depicting a strong case against her stalker, allowing her case to go to court, and the stalker to face punishment for their crimes. Afterwards, Mia decides to enroll in a support program where she meets people who have had similar experiences as her and learns that she is not alone on her journey to find inner healing as she takes back control of her life. Stalking is a serious crime that can cause significant harm to survivors. Incidents of stalking may seem harmless on their own, but when these acts are repeated and targeted towards someone, they can escalate over time and is considered a criminal act. Spark reported that nearly one in three women who were stalked by an intimate partner were also sexually assaulted by their partner. They also found that intimate partner violence, IPV survivors who are stalked, experience higher rates of sexual violence than those not stalked. Remember, if you or a loved one feels like they are in danger, please call 911. We must push for a society that does not tolerate stalking. One out of six, a fraction that shouldn't exist. Yet people of all ages, races, and sexes have the possibility to be part of the mix. In the midst of the day, one may walk, but not without fright of those that stop. Why should I be afraid to walk alone at night when strolling along the street is a basic right? Why should I be afraid to go to the subway when all I want to do is get through my day? The First Amendment is our freedom to express, from sweaters to scrubs or outfits to impress. I shouldn't have to worry about how I dress. People group and make their voices loud. They stand up and speak pr proud. No means no, and that is the way it should go. Thank you, Reina, for the poem. My name is Yuni Jang, and we will now introduce our second skit, which depicts workplace sexual harassment the focus of this skit is to encourage members in our community to take action as bystanders, to support survivors, and show how we can come together to create change in the workplace. Mark is a high school student who works part-time at a restaurant. 
During his time working there, he has noticed a lot of tension between some of his coworkers and the restaurant manager. One day, during his break, he witnesses the restaurant manager sexually harassing his coworker Jessica, who is also a student at his school. Jessica looks visibly scared and repeatedly tells the restaurant manager to stop, but the situation starts to get worse. To intervene, Mark quickly calls the manager's phone and says that their employee is looking for them due to an urgent issue in the kitchen. After the restaurant manager leaves, Mark walks in on Jessica crying and asks if she is comfortable telling him about what happened. Jessica expresses that she has been experiencing ongoing sexual harassment and the restaurant manager threatens to fire her if she goes against him. This has also taken a big toll on her mental health. She fears going to work every day and experiences anxiety attacks frequently, but she cannot afford to lose her job due to her family's financial situation. Mark and Jessica decide to have a meeting with all their coworkers to discuss the restaurant manager's behavior. During the meeting, Jessica shares her experiences, which encourages several other employees to speak up about the harassment they've also faced from the restaurant manager. The coworkers decide to unionize and bring the issue to the Human Resources Department, demanding for an investigation to be conducted. They each sign a petition calling for a clear sexual harassment policy to be established at their workplace and for every current and new employee to undergo a mandatory Title IX training as part of the hiring process. The HR manager accepts the terms of the petition and conducts a thorough investigation. The findings of the investigation show that the restaurant manager perpetrated workplace sexual harassment against several employees. As a result, he was dismissed from his position. Sexual harassment in the workplace is hardly talked about, but it is happening. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, 60% of women say they have experienced unwanted sexual attention, sexual coercion, sexually crude conduct, or sexist comments in the workplace. However, over 85% of people who experience sexual harassment never file a formal legal charge, and approximately 70% of employees never even complain internally. These numbers show that we must create environments where survivors feel safe to report these criminal acts and will be met with support and understanding. Reporting sexual harassment can be difficult and an emotional process. However, it's important to know that help is available and survivors don't have to suffer in silence. If you see something, say something. By speaking up against sexual harassment, you can take the first step towards creating a safer workplace for everyone. Remember, we all deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, and there are people who are ready and willing to support you when you need it the most. Thank you. Rising up from the shadows, you told me I was safe until you lied to my face. Just broken like a chain trapping me in this day. Sensations of our lavender haze dissipated with a fiery blaze. The compliments, the praise, was it all just part of our messed up face? Scorn, anguish, betrayal, my view of you, a room for chill. You tore my reflection apart, what it takes so long, what it take me so long to depart. I lost myself in the shame, you played me like a game. But even through the storm, I rose, I picked myself up from the shadows. Thank you, Hanmin, for the poem. My name is Ryan Cho, and we will now present our third and final skit, depicting intimate partner violence and sexual assault. In this skit, we will convey the significance of community as a whole, a uh, safe space for survivors, and also highlight some of the barriers that immigrants might face. Soul is a high school student whose family immigrated from South Korea to the U.S. almost a year ago. She had a hard time adjusting to the new culture and making friends, but now she is two months into her first relationship with another student at her school. Their relationship started off great at first, but as time went on, she noticed that her partner would make this would disrespect her boundaries and pressure her into doing sexual activities that she was not comfortable with. 
Whenever Unsol tried to spend time with her, her friends and family, her partner would get angry and threaten to leave her. This put a strain on her relationship and left her isolated from those around her. Although her partner makes her feel awful at times, she has little to no support as an immigrant in a new country and fears being completely alone. One day after an argument with in the hallway, a classmate reaches out to Unsol to see if she's okay. The classmate notices bruises on Unsol's arm and asks if she is being abused. It is difficult for Unsol to talk about what she has experienced, but her classmate is patient and tells her to take all the time she needs. They decide to use a translating app throughout the conversation for contextual support. After hearing her story, the classmate thanks Unsol for having the courage to share this. They explain that Unsol was sexually assaulted and abused, while emphasizing that what happened to her was not her fault. Unso was shocked to hear this, but appreciated that the classmate not only listened to her, but believed her as well. They offered to go with Unso to speak with a school counselor about the situation. <coughs> now aware of the situation, the counselor assures Unso that they will meet with her weekly to provide support as they proceed with an investigation. By the end of the school day, the classmate checks up on Unsol and explains that they are a member of the Youth Community Project Team, YCPT, which is a group of high school students who are dedicated to spreading awareness about gender-based violence and building healthy relationships. The classmate thinks that it could be a healthy space for Unsol and encourages her to come to the meeting after school. Unzo decides to join my CPT and finally feels a sense of connection, belonging, and support among the community. She now dedicates her free time to supporting survivors like herself and making a difference in her community. Thank you. So hi everybody, I just also want to give a shout out to our volunteers. So these youth volunteers will become the adult volunteers. Thank you for modeling for them. Um, this is my um, honor to present assembly member Raga. Thank you, thank you everybody, my assembly member Steve Raga. I think my, uh, someone from my staff already spoke, so you gave a good, uh, our well wishes and our congratulations. I just want to say uh, how proud we are, uh, especially for, for the youth that helped organize this today. Um, you did a lot more when, when I was that age. I was playing basketball all day. So you guys are, I have a good, good start uh, in, in advocating and, and, put, and putting forth events for our community, so thank you very much. Uh, anytime you guys need anything uh, from our office, feel free to reach out. I just wanted to come and give my full support. Thanks, and have a good rest of the day. I can hear the righteous. I sing with my heart as it starts to beat, threatening to jump out. I can hear it resounding. I sing loud and clear for everyone to hear. The sun shines bright. No near need to fear the wandering shadows. I can hear the righteous. I sing for myself, for those afraid, and those who were, for them to know we hear and will be heard. Never hold your peace, our truth will be known, as the melodies resonate for all those who are in need. Thank you, Davey, for reading the final poem. We'd like to thank you all for joining us here today and showing your support for survivors of sexual assault. Although we cannot stop sexual assault once it has happened, each and every one of us can take action in our day-to-day -day lives to prevent it from happening in the future. Thank you.
We're gonna do a group photo with the YCP tickets. Good, great job, guys. Thank you, thank you.